Hello everyone, happy belated New Year's and Merry Christmas. In the last episode, well first of all, welcome back to Let's Play Bayonetta. In the last episode, we had a little uh, spar with Jean, and I left off talking about the combat. I remember going over the dodge offset and how fluid the controls were, uh, but there's one, there's at least one thing that I didn't have time to mention, and one thing that I'm not sure if I mentioned. So in case I didn't mention that one thing, um, there is an item in here with a parry mechanic that's just like third strike, and I love, 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 love that. And it's also uh, necessary for if you're playing this game on uh, the hardest difficulty, non-stop inf infinite climax, because that's the only way you'd be able to activate witch time in that mode. Now. Uh, before I go into that, just a quick aside, it was initially uh, Platinum Games' idea to introduce the enemies in alphabetical order. I think for a while at least they go in that order, but I, um, they might skip a few letters. Like Affinity and uh, the Applauds were the first en enemies, then you get uh, a Beloved, I don't think there were any C enemies, then you fought uh, Fortitudo, but he wasn't really formally introduced they'll introduce him, you know, with his little title card later. And now we have, uh, the pretty annoying deer and decoration enemies here. And I think at some point in this chapter we get introduced to the enchant enemy. And fairness and fortitudo after that. Actually, you know, come to think of it, I'm pretty sure there's an enemy called a brave that we haven't met yet. Uh, I think he comes up in... Uh, what chapter is it? It's Route 666. I guess I'll just have to remember when we get there. Anyway, so they didn't have the uh, the enemy names mapped out until late in development because they needed the full set of enemies before they named them. And by then, the team had gotten so used to calling those deer and decorations the bubble enemies. Uh, I think it, it was something like Egg Angels, and that name just stuck internally. Oh, also, I am replaying this little bit of Chapter 2 up until the plaza section that we're going to come to. Because I realized I missed uh, the broken witch heart in the statue back there. But I'm going to point out all the stuff that uh, you don't see because I got it off camera. Uh, here, there was an umbran tear of blood in that second set of crows that's really easy to grab. And coming up, there's going to be a witch heart that I'll point out. Yeah. Anyway, uh, one of the terms, the combat terms I referred to in the last episode was uh, charging or uh, charge offsetting. And what that means is you're pretty much just holding down the punch or the kick instead of tapping them, and each weapon has a unique uh, charge property. The Onyx Rose shotguns that we got earlier, for instance, fire multiple shells that bounce off the ground and do more damage the closer you are to enemies. And obviously the Scarborough Fair. You can, uh, you can hit your punch or kick and the, the normal attack will come out and then if you hold the button down you fire the guns without interrupting the combo. You just extend the combo that way and do more damage with the charge move. And every single weapon has their own unique charge property. Some of them have really, really, uh, interesting ones that aren't just hold it down and do flat out more damage. What the f what the fuck is wrong with Luca's face? Oh? Huh? Sorry to interrupt the cutscene, but what the hell? Um, Luca? Luca? Oh my god, you need surgery, buddy. What the f Do you believe fuck? In fate? Fate brought us here together. And it will never tear us apart. Ha 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 ha. 
Sayonara. Fleur de cire eau de parfum. Such a wonderful floral bouquet. With its subtle hints of rosemary. You know, in the language of flowers, rosemary equates to remembrance. <laughs> Which doesn't quite equate to you, now does it? Bayonet! I'm not your pet. The name is Luca. A name you'd better remember. Ah! <laughs> Shit! Damn it! Wait! You can't just run away from me like that! I know what I saw that day! about your kind. Sure, my colleagues laugh at me for chasing fairy tales, amongst other things. But I know they're real. I know the truth. This smell. the same smell that clung to the air the day my father was murdered. Which means I'm right on your doorstep, Bayonetta. I'll let you in on a little secret, Cheshire. The name is Luke. You need to hone your sense of smell, my dear. There's no rosemary in the perfume. After all, rosemary's a demon repellent. The slow reveal of his face made it that much better. Uh, let's, let's go get Luca the medical help he so desperately needs. We'll be right back. Alright, we have, uh, we got Luca some help for his lip tumor problem. Um, <laughs> we're not gonna watch an old cutscene again, let's get beer. So, um, <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. That was our not so glorious introduction to the character of Luca. Uh, I mentioned earlier when we found, uh, I think the first uh, Antonio uh, diary, that Antonio uh, has a son, and that son is obviously Luca. Too late. And so the the person referred to there in that cutscene uh, that Luca is referring to is his father so he's obviously blaming uh, Bayonetta for the loss of his father and Luca is voiced by Yuri Lowenthal if you aren't already familiar with him he's a very prolific voice actor and maybe I'll get into the voice actors of the game uh, more in a later episode when I know I've as much stuff as uh, that I want to talk about so there's a couple things I want to point out there um, in the cutscene towards the end, if you notice, there is that shard of glass flying in slow motion. It was kind of hard to miss. Uh, the whole point of that, it's showing that even though Bayonetta can't be seen in the in the real world, her image from Purgatorio, the in-between world, is being reflected into Vigorid on the glass, which is a pretty neat little detail to keep in mind. And the other thing that I want to point out is that as soon as that cutscene ended, uh, I was beset upon. <laughs> Enemies attack right out of their introduction cutscene, so you can't just put the controller down when that's happening. 
take a little nibble of a snack or something. Uh, it's actually kind of irritating. It's a holdover tradition from Devil May Cry. When newly introduced enemies would pretty much do uh, just that. Huh. Come to think of it, I wonder how the new Devil May Cry is going to be. It actually doesn't look that bad despite all the legions of people whining about uh, new character design. That and the measly bits of information gleaned from the demo. Eh, it looks too easy. This isn't the Devil May Cry, I know. Uh, whatever. Mm, it looks. It actually looks kind of promising. I mean, I'm not a terribly big fan of the new design, but then again, I didn't like the old design either. I think they both look kind of terrible. But then again, I don't like Bayonetta's design either, and I love this game. Though I have to say I'm not the biggest Devil May Cry fan. Definitely gonna give the new one uh, a fair shake, though. Well, I kind of talked myself in circles there. so fast because you've got something to run from me but you can't escape me forever ah oh, man the fight was going so well too it just fell apart at the end, and I took a bunch of hits. So yeah, now we have yet another one of our uh, subplots going, and we're going to get more and more introduced. Uh, largely within this and the next uh, few chapters, and then it rolls straight through a bunch of different plot threads from there. So we now have our Lucas subplot. I think we get introduced to yet another subplot later on in this chapter. I think we're coming up on another fight right here. Yes, we are. Just gotta avoid the bus, and I... Yeah, there... If you backtrack a little bit after this fight, there's gonna be another Alfheim Gate, but we'll get to that in just a moment. These are the enchants. Wheel enemy... And wheel enemies are always... Especially annoying for some reason. Getting unpleasant... <laughs> no, unpleasant Dark Souls flashbacks, actually. Oh, I suppose the ones... Actually, I, you know, the wheel enemies in Kirby aren't bad. Those are, like, the only good wheel enemies. Or the only ones I can really tolerate, anyway. Oh, fucking Dark Souls wheel skeletons. Especially the ones that they threw... Oh, wait, are they the only... Anyway. Yeah, the little pricks they throw at you, like, um... I think it's in the catacombs, or like right before you start the Tomb of Giants, and I think there's like one or two other big wheel skeleton areas in there. I hate them. Oh man, I should... Oh, I'm gonna... Ah. I'm gonna have to get around to Let's Play in uh, Demon Souls and Dark Souls at some point. Probably after I'm done this and Mega Man X, actually. Because I've been talking about how I want to play Mega Man X forever. So, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. Bayonetta, Bayonetta, Mega Man X, Demon Souls, Dark Souls. That is my next several months of Let's Playing planned out. Alright, so I'm going to try to do this Alfheim Gate with just the Onyx Roses and the Scarborough Fair. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to, but we'll give it a fair shot. And if that doesn't work, we'll come back to it later. So, my thinking here is that because the goal of this uh, particular Alfheim gate is to use... Yeah, there it is. It's... you are limited to only seven punches and six kicks, and you can't just hold down a square to fire your guns, unfortunately. So you're limited to just punches and just kicks. So my thinking is that I want to be as efficient as possible. I want to 
use combos that give me uh, the most wicked weaves for the least number of kicks and punches. And I don't think I have Tetsu Zanko yet. Actually, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. And that didn't go so well. So, punch, kick, punch with uh, some charge modifiers might do the trick. You just dodge here. Oh, I screwed the super basic punch, kick, punch up. Uh, this isn't going to go well. Yeah, I missed the witch time, uh, the dodge. Miss it again, damn. This is a really poor attempt. Still got him to half health with, uh, oh, only one kick left. Unless I have some half health kick in my bag of tricks, that wouldn't have worked out. Let's see. I'm really he relying on the, uh, the charge modifier for the Onyx Rose here. Because the Onyx Rose does so much more damage in Scarborough Fair. And it does it much quicker, too, because there's also a bit of a time limit on this fight. It's not too strict, and I think I just blew any chance I had at this. Might as well fail it. Let's start over. I know that there's a trick you can do that involves uh, dodge offsetting on the hit that's supposed to be a Wicked Weave to get another one. Uh, maybe I'm misinterpreting how that actually works. Either way, I don't know exactly how to do it, unfortunately, but I think that should make it possible with the default weapons. I'm not sure if it is otherwise, but I'm going to give it maybe a few more shots. Yeah, I don't have any more punches left to do the punch kick punch. I should get three PKP combos off, but I, either way, I don't th actually think this is doable without um, either some trick that I'm not aware of or a hell of a lot of skill that I don't particularly possess. So we're just going to come back here later once I get uh, Shuraba or Shuruba. I can't remember what uh, the name is. Yeah, once I get the unlockable weapon from this stage... I should be able to just blow through this Alfheim gate, no problem. I guess we'll end uh, the episode here, and when we start the next episode, we'll jump straight into another Alfheim gate that I'm sure I can manage. So for the time being, take it easy folks, have a good one, make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, as always. Thanks for watching everyone, take it easy.